dry bones. In the name of Jesus, the dry bones shall live. The dry bones shall live. The dry bones shall live. You see, you saw it that in the book of Genesis chapter 1. The moment the Holy Ghost is on ground, it means the arena for miracle is ready. The moment the Holy Ghost is available on ground, we just need to speak any word of God you speak there shall come to pass because you are speaking with full authority in the presence of the Holy Ghost. So God's word in the presence of the Holy Ghost equals to a miracle. Hallelujah. Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 37 I'm going to read the story of the value of the right bones from verse 1 to verse 14. Okay, maybe I'll stop at verse 10. Then we are going to take the prayers. But you must be very attentive because it's not the dry bone you are used to knowing. It's a different dry bone. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them, run about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus fear the Lord God of, unto thee. Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put bread in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no bread in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this flame that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want to quickly just make a few sentences before we pray. You are not the dry bone. Amen. You are not the dry bone. The reason I say, and I know that you are not the dry bone, 
is because Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the law. You cannot be a dry bone. Hallelujah. You are not a dry bone. Now the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. So hear me tonight, people. Can I have the attention of everybody? God is in the business of saving men. God is in the business of delivering men. For those of us that have a little understanding of the prophecy of Ezekiel, you know that God used Ezekiel from chapter 1 to chapter 33 to warn Israel. That Israel have backslidden, that Israel have left God, that Israel have gone into apostasy, that Israel were worshipping idols, that God was angry with them. And because God was angry with them, God was ready to take over to allow Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to take over Israel and to kill as many people as possible and to take as many as slaves. They were one time without number. Jeremiah was preaching. Ezekiel was preaching. Many prophets came up at that time. But Israel would not listen. Israel have left their first love. They have left the God that saved them, that brought them out of the land of bondage, that helped them to cross the Red Sea on a dry ground. The God that took them out of slavery and fed them with manna for 40 years. Israel have left their first love. And God's anger was kindled against them. And God told them, I will destroy you people. You people are messing up. But Israel did not change in their apostasy. Israel did not repent in their rebellion. Israel continued, you know, in this kind of life. And the wrath of God came upon them. Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed the entire Israel. The temple was completely destroyed. Houses of men were destroyed. Some people were taken captive to Babylon. Now, a lot of people died. See, what you need to know is that God does not just punish people. People don't just go into hardship. Don't worry about any, what anybody is going to tell you. Take your Bible and sit down with it. Nobody just suddenly become poor or houseless or homeless or childless if not for sin. God hates sin. God will do everything to know, to let people know that he will punish sin. It was because of Israel's sin that they became the dry bone in the open valley. God was angry with them. God allowed the king of Babylon to kill them and mess up the souls of men. Now, when one person is killed and is buried, is buried in a grave, that grave is called a valley. The, in fact, for those of us who are in spiritual warfare, the fourth level of spiritual warfare, the next realm is the grave. The grave is the realm of spiritual warfare. So, if you are not buried in the grave and you put in the open valley, in the open, unfortunately, in the open valley, the people have no grave. When there are so many, when the soldiers are so many, they allow them to fall. They put them in the open valley. Now, in the grave means you will be alone inside a box. And the maggots and the flies and all the rodents will be eating you little by little to remain your bone. But in the open valley, everybody lies bare. Everybody lies naked. In the open valley, the rodents, the animals, the flies, all kinds of things, they continue to leave the flesh until the flesh is completely destroyed. Now, in the case that we are seeing here, the flesh has been completely, totally consumed. And the only thing we have left there was just the bones. And God was using Ezekiel to check out what was going to happen. Whether the, the dry bones will be able to come back to life. Now I'm speaking to you as a child of God. And I'm so speaking to you as your pastor. Many times we overestimate many of us. 
We overestimate some people. We see person sinners. So, ah, this person knows God. Unfortunately, most of us inside the church are sinners. And we have refused to repent. And God is not happy with it. The day we repent, God begins to make progress with us. God begins to open to us new realms and begin to enlarge our coast and cause us to begin to enjoy. Tonight, I, I want to give you that benefit of the doubt that you are redeemed. I want to allow you to take your time to pray for others. Because if we look around us, we see that there are so many people in the open valley. There are so many people who are suffering, who are going through the hardship, who are hardly having what to eat, who are hardly having what to eat, to drink, who are hardly having how to send their children to school. But tonight God is going to use you. You are the prophet. You will represent the prophet in the open valley. Hallelujah. And your prophecy shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. You will prophesy God's word. God's word when prophesied. In the moment you can produce God's word the way it is written here. It's called prophecy. This is the sure prophecy. This one cannot fail. Unfortunately you will not see anybody as ordained a prophet in the New Testament. Anyone that can pronounce the word of God the way it is written here and shout it and scream it is a prophet of God's word. So if you can mention the word of God as contained in the Bible, as it pertains to any situation of any man or any woman, you shall be prophesying tonight. And as long as we have the Holy Ghost, who is now resident upon the earth, filling this arena, the word of God, meeting with the Holy Spirit, is an instant miracle. God will touch the hearts of men because of your prayer tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I just want to show you something. Anytime bad is mentioned in the Bible, it's mentioned for evil, it's mentioned for bad, it's mentioned for death, it's mentioned for somebody going down. It's mentioned. So this one was an open valley. The open valley that Ezekiel recommended, uh, 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 recorded here is actually open valley of dry bone is the place of the dead where the sinews that's the muscle have disappeared the flesh have disappeared the skin have disappeared what was left was just the bone it's a very bad and devastating situation that even imagining it can send somebody to, somebody to hospital and in the book of Genesis we see there's a valley you know, in Genesis chapter 14, that was when uh, Abraham actually fought the five kings of the Amorites and defeated them. That was called the Valley of, of Sidon. Genesis chapter 14. The, now, the psalm is writing in Psalm, in psalm 23. He says, you know, in verse 4, he found himself in a valley. In a valley. So every time valley was mentioned, a valley of death. It was mentioned for death, it was mentioned for evil. There's a valley of Enom, which is also called Gehenna, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 31. It was a valley where the Israelites were killing their own children, their sons and their daughters, and using them for sacrifices. There is a valley in the book of, uh, in the book, in the book of Revelation chapter 16 verse 16, the valley of Megiddo, which is also called Amagedon which is the place of the last battle that will take place. There's a valley, the valley of Jezreel, in Hosea chapter 1 and verse 5, which is the valley which prophet Elijah overtook the chariots of Ahab. There's a valley which is called the valley of Achor, which is the valley in Joshua chapter 7, the valley where Achan and all his children and family were destroyed and roasted to death because they sin against God. So valley is always mentioned, is below the earth. Is below the earth and is always mentioned for them. But tonight none of us is in the valley in the name of Jesus. We came to the valley to see what is happening to people and as we take our position in the place of prayer, God will hear our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? Your prayers tonight will be answered in the name of Jesus. You are not the dry bone in the valley. You came in here to prophesy. Tell your neighbor, I came to prophesy. You know, the Bible says God has given you life. Jesus was saying in John chapter 10 and verse 10. 
He said, the thief come back for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. So Jesus is there. Having submitted your life and having been, having received the Holy Spirit of God, you are a carrier of Jesus and you are a person marked for abundant life. Can I hear somebody say Amen? And because of that, you shall not die before your time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You won't die before your time in Jesus' name. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, the Bible says, For more than conquerors are we through the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. We are more than conquerors. No devil can fight us and stand. They are afraid of us because of who, who, who we are. We don't even carry only ourselves. We carry God the Father, we carry God the Son, and we carry God the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because you need to know who you are in Christ to be able to stand to deliver another person. And to deliver another person, you yourself must have been delivered. That's why I'm saying this tonight. I'm saying that tonight we didn't come here as a dry boat in the open valley that they are going to prophesy for bone to come and join the bone for, 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 for to prophesy flesh upon them. We have come here as the prophets of God to prophesy for those bones we know. And where they do exist that tonight the dry bones shall be alive again in the name of Jesus Christ. I said the dry bones shall live in the name of Jesus. The dry bones shall live in the name of Jesus Christ. I said the dry bones shall live in the name of Jesus. More than conquerors are we through the blood of Jesus Christ our God. Hallelujah. So God is in that business of deliverance. Thank God for prophet speak here. He says, shall these bones live? He said, Lord, thou knowest. There's no answer that I would have been better than that. You are the God. You know everything. You know everything. And because you don't know, he said, okay, now, position yourself and begin to prophesy. And the prophet said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Sir, it's a very devastating picture to even imagine it. Because all the flesh have dried and melted, lost in the soil. It doesn't matter. The truth is that it doesn't matter what the condition of a man or a woman is. When God is in the business of serving, the Bible says in the Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 that God will save to the uttermost. That if you are, if the lock of your staff inside a, the ground of a 75 story building, God will save you and come and remove your staff to the uttermost. It does not matter how far or how bad, or how terrible your situation is, when God is prepared to save you, He will save you all the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is able to save, our God is able to deliver, our God is able to make whole, our God is able to set free. Hallelujah. It does not matter what anybody has said about you. It does not matter what anybody has done against you. It does not matter where they took your name to. It does not matter what juju they have prepared against you. It does not matter the enchantment they have done concerning your future. God is able to say to the uttermost. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say God is able to say to the uttermost. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, the Bible says that, that God is able to save exceedingly, abundantly, and above. He's able to deliver. He's able to save. Oh, somebody say you don't understand my situation. I don't care how bad your situation is today. This night, your situation has made with deliverance in the name of Jesus. The bones were so dry. Some of these bones were dead. Maybe 50 years ago. Maybe 1,000 years ago. Maybe 2,000 years ago. But God said, prophesy. Prophesy. The bone will wake up from here and look for the bone. The wet bone will wake up from and look for the bone of the leg there. And they joined themselves. Every bone to his bone. 
It doesn't matter how dry your bone is tonight. There shall be deliverance in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter for how long it has been dry. It shall, there shall be deliverance tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how bad the condition is. A lot of people have written you off. Even you may have written yourself off. Tonight, the deliverance in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody said, I don't know if I will ever have a child. Oh, this was, I don't know if ever I will I'll be able to pass exam. You may have written yourself off, but God has not written you off. Amen. He's able to save, he's able to deliver to the uttermost. Ah, they say they do the incantation concerning his name, and as they throw in the coin inside the river, one fish just swallow the coin. There's no way they can find it, sir. Tonight, that fish will come and vomit the coin because you are involved in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I have a better amen now? The Lord is able to deliver. Our God is able to save. Our God is able to make whole. Our God is able to set free. He's able to draw. He's able to draw men. He's able to save to the uttermost. It does not matter where your problem is coming from. That problem, I mark an end to it tonight. I mark an end. Ah, Pastor, you know, this thing has been here since time immemorial. Tonight, that your problem is packing and is going and never to return in the name of Jesus. Never to return! Never to return! I will never return again in the name of Jesus. The situation was bad. It was an open valley. It was not just one dead body buried there. There were thousands and thousands of dead Israeli soldiers that were killed during the war. And they didn't have time to go and prepare grave for them one by one. They dumped all of them in the open valley. It gives all the warnings of the prophet. The prophet cried and they shouted. They prayed and they knocked. Even Jeremiah had to go naked. Yeah, to be able to get attention for people to receive the prophecy. But the people said we hadn't. So God allowed them to be punished. God allowed them to be killed. God allowed them to be taken out of their homeland. God allowed them to become strangers, for those of them who were still alive, to become slaves in Babylon. The lesson to my people. If you look around our community, even in, within your own family, you realize there are some dry bones. There are some dry bones there that if we don't do anything about them, they will mess up your salvation directly or indirectly. They will mess up all the effort of the night vigil and the prayer and all the intercession you have been getting involved every day. So tonight we are going to take their burden upon our shoulders. We are going to identify them. You know them. You know them. Oh, somebody say, I'm salvation is for me personal. Thank God for your life. But the truth is, if you are the only person who have been marked to go to heaven in your family, You'll be wasting your time because just once, one little sin, one little sin on that day, it will mark you out of those going to heaven. So if you are going to heaven, it's good you try to prepare others within your family that will be able to go with you. And how will it be if you should get to heaven and then you are the only one? So what I want us to do tonight is identify some, some dark spots. All of us have those dark spots. Dark spots in our homes, dark spots in our families, dark spots among our children, dark spots between our father and our mother, dark spots everywhere. We want to stand in the gap to pray for them and to deliver them from destruction and to speak God and the life of God into their homes, into their lives, into their system, into their very existence. That's what I want us to do tonight. Hallelujah. Is the prayer night? Are you ready for this? Because if we don't deliver them, they will go to hell. Not just go to hell, they will suffer in this world. Nobody just goes to hell like that. They will suffer and let that become bitter for them. 
And you know, we read the Bible, say, tongues and kisses. Tongues and kisses. Speaking English, in Sapla, they talk me. They call it chuku chuku. Anything you put, it took your hand. No trustness. No blessing. Everybody does everything and they go with it. But anything you touch, tongues to kisses. Tongues and kisses. Confusion, frustration, devastation, stagnation, oppression. Everything refuses to work. People go and do work and come back with money. You go out, you come back with sorrow. You come back with accident. You come back with frustration. Come back with depression. Come back with uh, all kinds of issues. So tonight we are going to terminate those things as it pertains to our family. We are going to set the family free in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to set them free in the name of Jesus. See, if your father is going to hell, it will affect you. If you are not careful, it will drag you to hell. If your mother is going to hell, it's going to affect you. If you are not careful, they will watch you. They will want company to go to hell with them. So, and no, don't just go to hell. People just don't go to hell. They suffer first. Anyone that will go to hell, first suffer. The serious suffering in this world. And now, you have seen the hardship. Now you have seen how people are suffering. You can understand that the suffering, in fact, this one is the, is the beginning of the, of, of, of the labor pain. It's the beginning of the labor pain. So everybody needs to align himself with God so that things can turn out right. So that the families can grow better. So that work can be easy. So that we can testify and say the Lord has done it. And our God has done it in the name of Jesus. Our God has done it in the name of Jesus Christ. This God, He will do it. He has done it before. He will do it for you also. I say, our Father, He will do it for you. You may have children are giving you concerns. This is the right time to stand in the gap for them. How can you go through all the stresses in this world and bring up children who become useless, vagabonds, robbers, who have no focus in life? God will not allow that to happen. So we are just going to look for the scripture. When we mention a topic, I have seven prayer points there. When we mention the prayer point, because it's prophecy we want to do tonight. We don't want to pray too much. What is prophecy? In the New Testament, First Peter chapter 1, 20 and 21. The prophecy, the word of God is called the true prophecy. So every prophecy was written not only for Peter, but for every word that reads the Bible. As you stand to mention that word concerning any name, concerning any person, you are prophesying. And as long as there's Holy Spirit in this place, once the word of God is spoken, it brings it to pass. I prophesied as I was commanded, what happened? The bone looked for his own bone. It's a son of my professor. A speaker started to prophesy. Oh, bone, look for your bone and join together. Flesh, look for your flesh and join together. Sinuous, sinuous is what we call muscle. Tozo. Look for your people and join together. And the flesh for his flesh and the bone for his bone, according to how I prophesy. And that's what is going to happen tonight. A lot of people are going to have open doors because of our prophecies tonight. Amen. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we do pray, all that we will speak, all that we do prophesy. And He has marked you. Say, You are my battle axe. You are my battle, my weapon of war. With you, I will destroy nations. With you. I will also build up nations. So, the same mouth, if you can use it positively, God will use it to build homes and families tonight. God will use it to restore marriages tonight. God will use it to take away that, that, that wicked, you know, desire. Ogogoro, it will take it away from somebody's mind. God will take, because of your prophecy tonight, God will destroy sin in the lives of men and give them reasons to enjoy God. So, your word is powerful. All we need to do is to ensure that the presence of God is in this place. Before we start to pray, you can be sure of the answer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, we are going to pray seven prayer points tonight. I'm just saying this because I want everybody to prepare. 
And before we start to pray, you will pray for yourself and confess your sins. Confess your sins. Two day breaks and we go up and down. We meet with different people. We do all, all sorts. We don't think that we are deceiving ourselves if we come to church and we think that we are too pure. To be deceiving ourselves. God is not interested in fools. So we must be honest to say, Lord, we have sinned. Mere greeting you are, uh, not greeting your elder, is this it? Who oh, go to God and say, Lord, we have sinned. Wash us with hip stuff and we shall be clean. No, the Bible says, if we, if we say we have no sin, it say we lie. And the truth is not in us. Says John chapter 1 and verse 8. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the word of God. And as we are speaking prophecy, good prophecy into the lives of others, that's how God will release blessing into our own lives. Can I hear somebody say amen? Can I hear somebody say amen? Oh, so seven prayer points we are going to pray. Prayer point number one is going to be about the families, lifting up the families. You will, you must not pray for your own family. If your family is perfect, everything is working, no problem. But at least you know a family that things are not working. So we are going to lift up that family to God. That alienation from God must be removed. We want God to be five and six with every family so that we can enjoy God in this world. Number two prayer, we are going to deal with issue of captivity. Some people are in prison right now as I'm talking to you. Not a physical prison. Maybe not a physical prison, but a prison that things are not working. Where there are barriers, the doors have been shut, barricades have been raised, and things are not just working. And we call on this God. God has promised He will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. We are going to invite Him and say, Lord, do it now. Set your children free that they can be able to live a purposeful life in this world so that the doors will be open and things will work and God Himself will take the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer point number three, we are going to look at causes and all forms of premature death in the family and we are going to settle that. Number four, we are going to talk about nakedness, hunger, embarrassment, financial embarrassment of all sorts and God will surely settle it. Prayer point number five is about the salvation of the souls of men and the provision of, 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 of what to eat and to drink and good health for the members of that family. Please, I'd like us to be willing to partake in this prayer and put in your whole heart. Put in your whole heart because you are going to see the result. There are dry bones. Those dry bones, they can go. All we need to send any dry bone going is the presence of the Spirit of God and be able to look for one scripture, one scripture as it affects that situation and speak that scripture into that situation in the presence of the Holy Ghost, there will be an instant miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's stand up on our feet. Just release yourself. Release yourself. You are going to prepare ourselves for prayer. It's not a prayer that anybody can rush into. We've got to prepare ourselves. Stand up on your feet. Yield yourself to God. Yield yourself to God. You've been to different places today. Ask the Lord to push you. Ask the Lord to cleanse you. Ask the Lord to forgive you. All your weaknesses, all your shortcomings, all your humanities, all your frailties, all the things that do not measure up to God's standard. Let's ask God for purging tonight. Let's ask God for cleansing tonight. Release yourself and begin to pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, come down and fill this arena. Come and take charge of this meeting. Come and rule tonight. Come and rule tonight. Holy Ghost, do it tonight. Do it tonight. Do it tonight. Do it tonight. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Ghost, do it again. Do it again in my life. Open my to see Jesus. 
You are not Holy Spirit. Be honest tonight, you are a mortal man. If you are mortal, then you are a sinner. You are a sinner. All you need to do is to confess your sin. The moment you confess your sin, God forgives you and you become pure again. Confess your sin. You are a mortal man, an ordinary sinner. So be honest tonight to say, Lord, I have sinned against you in my words, in my thoughts, in my deeds. Be gracious to forgive me and tell him what you have done wrong. He is always able to forgive. Oh, the psalmist said, if I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. Uh, some school of thought in Christianity say, you don't commit sin again since you are born again. I mean, that's the fallacy of the highest order. We are sinners, born sinners. Every day we commit sin, and when we confess, God forgives us. So let's talk to God and say, Lord, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence. Cast me not away. Push me of any sin, anything that would have been a shortcoming to me. Push me, Lord. Push me, Lord. Let nothing stand as a hindrance to me now as I come to the altar of prayer. Push me one again, O oh God, and use me as your sanctified vessel, a sanctified vessel, O oh God, for your use. Make me a sanctified vessel. Make me a sanctified vessel, a vessel for your use. Help me, Lord, to do your will. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the love of your salvation. of every heart that is in this meeting. We ask for a purging and a cleansing. Wash us and make us clean in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive our sick and weaknesses, our human frailties, our shortcomings, those things we have said that was wrong, those associations we found ourselves that were wrong, the places we went to that was wrong. 
Father, Lord, forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all forms of unrighteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, as we step into this prayer, make us a vessel, a vessel that is fit for the master's use in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when I mention a prayer point, I'm not going to tell you the name of the person you are going to pray for. But if you understand what I have said, we are set to pray. And as we pray this prayer tonight, you can take your Bible in your hand. The only way this prayer will be will work, will be fast, will be answered, is that you will be speaking God's word pertaining to that prayer point into the lives of the men and the women and the families of men you are praying for. That's how the prayer will work and will be fast. It's not, oh God, hear this man, oh God, help this person, oh God, help this. No, 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 that's not the word we are going to pray. What we are going to pray, the sure word of God's prophecy. If the person is sick, you are going to Say, Lord, send your word and eat it. I'm standing on Psalm 107 and verse 20. The Bible says, you send forth your word and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. Therefore, send your word to Mr. Kongo's house. Let there be instant salvation and instant healing in the name of Jesus. So we are going to pray according to God's word. Thank God we have done a little of God's word this year. And then we are going to now begin to prophesy. Uh, Go to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel said, I prophesied as I was commanded. All the commands of God are there in the Bible. Nobody is going to pray outside the Bible. So you didn't come with my Bible today. I'm sorry for you all because I've taught you that you should always come with your Bible to the church. Look for God's word as it pertains to this prayer point and speak it into the life of the family that you so desire that they should receive this blessing. Please, do I make myself clear? Okay, so we are ready to pray. We have seven prayer points to pray. So I want this place to bombard. I want people to charge. And those of us that we don't even know any Bible at all, I'm sorry for you. I will be mentioning some Bible portions here. So if you are fast enough, you can catch it. If you are Bible, you do confirm it and speak it into the life of that family, into the life of that man, into the life of that woman. You desire that instant. Those of them have been sick. They are bedridden. It is your prayer that will bring about their deliverance tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our God is faithful, hallelujah. Prayer point number one, families and men or women into sin, they have been into sin, habitually and perpetually committing sin and therefore they are in alienation. They have been disconnected from God and suffering one thing or the other. They have been disconnected from God. I want to raise this prayer on their behalf, asking for their healing, asking for their deliverance, asking for God to help them to rise up above sin. The Bible says that God's ears are not blocked that he cannot hear, neither is his hand short that he cannot reach out to sin. Isaiah 59 from verse 1 and 2. But sin has become a barrier between us and God. So as we lift up this man, as you lift up this woman, as you lift up this family, you are going to speak forgiveness. You are going to speak repentance. You are going to cry on the behalf of this person that God should arise and forgive. Oh, if I confess my sin, God is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse me from every form of unrighteousness. So let's begin to pray in this direction. Father, Lord, we lift up the families of men, the brothers and the sisters, as many are indulging and committing one form of sin or the other that is making you far from them. Oh, God, we say, Lord, let the us for sin down in their heart. Let it die in their spirit. Lord, drag them to yourself. Oh God, you love the sinner. You hate the sin. It is you that 
pay their price for their deliverance. Oh Lord, this day, let the hush for sin die in them. Let the love for Christ rise in them. Oh God, that they may say as Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, it's no longer I that live it, but that Christ that live it in me. Oh, that sin will no longer have dominion over us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord, show yourself strong. Perfect that work which you have started. Father, Lord, show yourself strong and commit, oh God, the people into your heart. Let the people rise up. Approve sin. Let them rise up. Approve this backlog. Oh God, every form of drunkenness. Let them rise above drunkenness. Let them rise above all forms of gossip. All forms of papaiti. All works of iniquity. Let them rise up. Let them rise up. Let them rise up. Lord, raise an army that will rise up above the walls of the flesh. Oh God, the Bible says it will sow to the spirit. We shall also reap from the spirit. It will sow to the flesh. We shall reap from the flesh corruption. The tribals must leave. The tribals must leave. The tribals must come alive in the name of Jesus. They must come alive by the power of God in the name of Jesus. They must come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Tribal. Come alive. Tribal. Come alive. Malakabushi. Lusate te te libra fita da fura brachata. Ranzate libra le capra la cacote che le brachida. Ranzate te te le gregrida. O shara, la veta, la tata tocca. Ranzata la cacote cadeca. A taleca la cacosha. Ranzala la rata la caturida. Pana patelina, corona patelina. A taleca la grida, la grida, la grida. A rana la grida, la grida, la grida. A rana la tata la grida, la grida. Shara taleca da. Shara. In your power, oh God, show your power, show your power to the families of men, show your power, drag them out of hell, take them out of the snare of the father, take them out of the noise of pestilence, take them out of God from, from the net that the enemy has set for them. Lord, I stand as a prophet of the Almighty God. I stand as a prophet of God. And I prophesy life. As a tribal, you shall live, you shall not die. You shall live, you will not die. Malakabosha. Zutaleka teka de kadote zoniata. Rashete te le zete le kere gadi da 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 da. Muria maleka kushi de 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 kadi kaja. La zutu to lo zita la kadi gere gere da da. Brade kadi do lo rabla shata ta da ta. La zutu to lo zita la 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 de 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 da. In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We want to raise the prayer covering over those who are in one form of prison or the other. One form of captivity or the other. That God should take them out of prison now. In the name of Jesus. That God will take them out of prison now. A prison is a place where nothing changes. You see the same thing every day. 
day after day, same step, day after day, same step. No promotion, no education, no celebration, nothing to jubilate. The, that's the prison. That's the prison. The same thing, the same thing of yesterday, the same thing of today, the same thing of yesterday, the same thing of that's the prison house. They may not put a big uh, iron bar, but it's a prison. It's a prison. So as many men that are in prison, we call them out of that prison now. In the name of Jesus. In Psalm 107 from verse 14, the Bible says, He brought them out of darkness and the, and the shadow of death and break their bonds in sunder. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. That prison bar of iron has been cut in thunder. And the people are coming out of that prison house in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. They are coming out of that prison. You begin to see some new things. You begin to see some good things. You begin to experience some profession, some, some goodness, some mercy. Oh Lord, yes Lord, let there be fulfillment, O oh God, of your word in Isaiah chapter 61. Yes, in the lives of men. Yes Lord, yes Lord, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me. Ah, Lord God Almighty, Salaba Katiria, Lucia Talakakatan Kalakura Katitira, Rasuto Luziki Tikiri Kitikiri Kitikiri, Lucia Lulu, Lorola de la 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 Call men out of prison, call women out of prison. Yes, call them out of that prison house. In the name of Jesus. Call them, your friends, your brothers. Call them out of that prison house. That the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon them. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news unto the meek. And he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captive. And the opening of the prison house to them who are bound. Decree salvation to the captive in the name of Jesus. Salvation to the captive out of that prison. God has anointed me, standing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I decree, I declare, I proclaim, I pronounce salvation. As many that are captive, as I mentioned their name, so they are loose from captivity. So they come out of bondages and cleavages of the devil in the name of Jesus. Come out of that bondage now. In the name of Jesus, come out of that bondage. Come out of that bondage right now. Malalala. Raise the Kaloku City Liki. Branalala. Branalala. Branakata. Branakaya. Lusututu. Lusiteli. Talala. Diririra. Go ahead. Come out of that bondage. In the name of Jesus. I stand as a prophet tonight and I command you, come out of that cleavage, come out of that darkness, come out of that shame, come out of that stagnation, come out of that intimidation, come out of that frustration, now! Ba 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 ba! Cha 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 la la! Zgirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigirigir
I come you, I call you out of that prison house. I call you out of that prison house. I demand the chains destroyed before you. I demand Nalaka Kasha, Lazata Laka Katoto Lozita, Ranzoto Lozita, La Vagura Katirantala, Ranzoto Lozia, La Kalgrigra, Luda, La Dara, Alla Bosoto Lozita, La Kazitaria, Lavra Laka Kushi, Rubra Shandala. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the progress we are making. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the doors you have opened. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for whosoever the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for freedom. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Spirit of the Lord is here tonight. There is liberty in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Premature death. Every form of premature death. Any family you know have been going through this quest. Premature death. It must end now in the name of Jesus Christ. It must end now. It must end tonight. It must end tonight. It must end tonight. Jesus said, yes. The thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I am come, that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. The reason Jesus came is for abundant life. No life shall be cut short anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 118 verse 17, the psalmist said, I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. The great prophet said, the spirit of Death shall be disannulled. Hallelujah. So every form of premature death in the family that you know, you are going to speak to it and you say, Look, you spirit of premature death, fact you, you are a cause. You are a generational cause that came from generational lines. And we confess the sins of our brothers and our sisters, and therefore we nullify the cause. And we say, you spirit of premature death, pack your load and go. No one shall die prematurely anymore in this family. Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I shall not die but live. I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. Standing on the word of God. In Psalm 139 and verse 19, the Bible says, Surely that will slay the wicked. O God, depart from me therefore. You bloody men, we, we decree and declare, standing on Psalm 139, verse 16, the Bible says, Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashionable, when as they were none of them. Father, Lord, you are the one that knew my days and the days of my friends and my brothers and my sisters. I come against every form of premature death, untimely death. Now, in the name of Jesus, I come against it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, Liva Lika Kushirida Bara Katiada Langsototo Lusita Laka Kuzidia. Yes, Lord. Thank you for this that you have in stock. Thank you for your blessing, your goodness. Oh God, none shall die, none that none shall die prematurely in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Psalm 91 and verse 16, the Bible says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father Lord, satisfy your children with long life. Satisfy the members of New Life Covenant Church with long life and show us your salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are standing on your word and we are able to do that thing which we have promised. We are able to 
to bring to pass your purpose and your intent. We are able, oh God, to supply our needs in the name of Jesus. Oh God, satisfy your broke people with long life. Show us your salvation. Complete the work you have started. Oh Lord, perfect it. Oh Lord, complete it in the name of Jesus. Father, do it now. Muria Malakamosha. La zeta ne kaboko se telebrata kalabrate. La zoto tolo zeta la brala kakanda. Rosale kabranda ne kaziata. La zoto tolo zeke ne kere 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 kere. Arabla ne 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 na 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 ne. La zate tele zete la kia se kere geta. Brade kate tele zia la kade kadi a kala kata. Oh Lord, forgive our shortcoming. Oh Lord, forgive where we messed up. Father, speak life into our life. Oh God, speak life into our life. Rasata la kasuto lo zeta la brata, asata la brata kana kaka chata, ala kaseta la brana kaka santia, urashata la brana kaka tekete, ala zoto lo zeta ta le tamki te aba. Lord Jesus, long life and prosperity. In Jesus' name we pray. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. We are going to pray. We want to raise a prayer against all forms of nakedness and hunger. Nakedness and hunger. You know two, three persons you want to use for reference. You can use it and we are going to pray. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me the hand of God. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the sea waters. God knows where the best things are. That's where He's going to take these people to. In the name of Jesus Christ, He knows. God knows where the best, the best of the best. He knows where they are, and God will take us there. He, he provides. You know, say I've been young. I'm now getting old. I have never seen the righteous man forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. That's the scripture. So we are going to prophesy into the lives of men to remove poverty and nakedness, hardship of different sizes and shape. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our eyes are on you. You will not fail. Our eyes are on you. Standing on your word, O oh Lord. Yes, yes. Standing on your word. Yes, in some in, in in the book of Psalm 23 and verse one. Yes, you promise to be our shepherd, never to let us die of hunger. Lord, reading Isaiah 58 from verse seven, you say you will guide us, you will guide us steadily to be in the right places and to do the right things, and you supply all our needs on a daily basis. We shall not lack for any good thing in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, Lord, O oh God. Let there be provisions. Let there be assurances. Let there be, O oh God, provision. Let there be salvation. Let there be abundance. You supply all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You lead us on the right track that we may do only that thing that will please you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. You complete the work you have started and only your name will be glorified. Father, Lord God, we can see the devastation, devastating hunger in the world. We can see the frustration and oppression all around us. We can hear the cries of men and the weeping, the agony, oh God, because of the hardship that they are facing. Lord, we raise the lamentation to you. Our children are hungry on the street corners. Oh Lord, show yourself strong right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Kala kura kala kiri kira, brasa tala brala kasi, asyari dah duduk duduk ia cici dah, ia kala kaku sete ni kira kura kala kiri kira, bosha la kaki tala, bosha la kala kaki sete ni kadi dia, muri mana kaku sete kiri 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 nari dah, lusa tu lusi ala kalu kaku sete ni kiri kiri kira, bolu kaku sete ni kira kala kiri 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 nari dah, kiri kiri nari dah, lusa tu lusi tala kura kala sete ni nari dah. Thank you, Lord, for this that you have done.
Blessed be your name, our God, our Father. Thank you for your faithfulness, which is unto the end of the earth. Thank you, Lord, for your only man that you should like. Take the glory for yourself tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take this one for as many that are sick, any form of sickness, let there be healing tonight. Let the healing stream of the Almighty flow. He will send his word and heal tonight. He will heal all of our diseases and sicknesses. He is our God. He is a great healer. Nobody has ever come to him for healing and he said no. He will heal tonight. So pray for as many people that you know. They need one form of healing or the other. Physical, mental, psychological, emotional and spiritual. Let there be healing tonight. 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 The Madeka Brota Kalakarikara. Send forth your word and heal our diseases. Send forth your word tonight and heal our diseases. The Bible says you send your word. Nobody ever came to you. Yes, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17, you say you will heal all of our wounds. Though they call us an outcast, you will heal us. Yes, though they say nothing good comes out of Zion, you will heal us. Father Lord, let there be healing. Heal them be healing in your house. Oh God, heal your people, heal your men, your women, heal your boys, your girls, your children. As many God having one form of discomfort or sickness or disease of any size or shape of any doesn't matter how long it has been there. Tonight, let there be healing. 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 In the name of Jesus, Lord, do this thing, oh God. Only you can do this thing. Do this thing and take the glory for yourself. Le malaka kushe tala brada katira. That dala kura kache tete leke 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 leke. Brada kache tete leke 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 leke. Brada taka leka kushe. Langza tata la zuto lo zita. Langza tata lo zuto lo brada kata. Langza tato la zuto la brada kaya. Alla kase tete leke 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 leke. Langza zuto to la hunge le la brada kaka zita. Kaka taka kasha. Langza tala kakuti. Rasha ni kari andala. Arabla zeri zeri zita. Langza in this prayer. Thank you, Lord, for healing your church. Thank you, Lord, for new, new dimensions of grace in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It's my turn now to pray for you. You have stood in this position of a prophet tonight. God cannot allow his prophet to suffer. Hallelujah. God does not allow his prophets to cry for provision. He said, before you ask, I will say, yeah, I am. So it's my turn to pray for you. That's how we are going to bring this meeting to a close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you need to do is to connect by faith. There's nothing God cannot do. There is no door God cannot open. There's no situation God cannot change. It doesn't matter how bad the circumstances may look like. The Bible says, with men it might be impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. So, that your case is a possibility. So I want to pray for you. I just want you to have faith in this prayer. Connect Connect in the realm of the spirit. As you connect in the realm of the spirit, the blessing shall flow to you in the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the God of Shedra, Mesha, and Abednego, that God that he stood the fire. They could not be roasted in that oven. The God of Daniel. 
that turned the lion den into an air conditioned room. The God of Elijah that answered by fire. You are a perfect God. The God of Paul and Silas that break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the parts of iron. The Lord, I invite you into this meeting. Overwhelm every partaker in the name of Jesus. Lord, where we have fallen, strengthen us to stand. Where we have missed the map, put us on the right track. Where we have gone astray, bring us back to the place where we are supposed to be. Father, have your perfect way in the lives of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the torrents of hardship blowing across this country. The pains that people are going through. These ones are exempted in the name of Jesus. You are the God that brought exemption into Egypt. While there were flies in the entire Egypt, the region of Goshen was exempted. And therefore, these ones are exempted from the financial crisis of this country in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalm 75 and verse 6, that promotion doesn't come from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. That promotion comes from God. For God lifts up one man and bring down the other. For as many people, oh God, that you'll be lifting up in the cause of this shaking, let these ones here be among them in the name of Jesus. Let these ones be among those to be lifted up. They will never be among those to be brought down. They will be among those to be lifted up. In the name of Jesus, Lord, lift them up and let them know that they have been lifted up in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, who can battle with you? Who can battle with the mighty, terrible God? Who can battle with a God that opens his armory? Father, any man, woman, any boy there, any wicked power manipulated or teamed by men to bring down any one of these people, let them face the wrath of God in the name of Jesus. Let them face the wrath of God in the name of Jesus. Let them face the wrath of God in the name of Jesus. Every arrow that was shot at any of them, I stand on God's altar as a prophetic voice tonight to demand and command that the arrow be returned.